Good afternoon. Thank you for taking time to come and connect with me with the Word of God for an opportunity to have what we call real moments, that is relationships expressed in anointed love. And in the real moment today, I want to take time to focus on uh, forgiveness. And I want to just talk about uh, being able to maintain a forgiving spirit uh, while managing negative emotions. Uh, Sometimes when this uh, happens in our life and we uh, forgive people, uh, some believers have been concerned or confused because the pain remains or the negative emotions continue to uh, surface up perhaps when they think about it or when uh, something is done to remind them of that particular event. And God understands that. And But I believe that when we seek to maintain the spirit of forgiveness, uh, that the Holy Spirit comes to help us manage those uh, negative emotions. We don't have to deny them. We don't have to, you know, act like they don't, they don't exist. Uh, but I believe that the grace of God is there to come alongside to help us. However, uh, we have to be real that living as a Christian in this world does not exempt us from having painful experience. Some of us brought these painful experiences into our relationship with God from our past. Some of us have uh, 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 obtained uh, these negative experiences since being in Christ and, and, and everything. Uh, but I think what we have to do is consider individuals in the Bible that God uh, gives us as witnesses to what that looks like and also the instructions that he give us. Uh, Sometimes I'm amazed when I listen to the television and somebody have been victimized and all of a sudden uh, they stand in front of the television and the first thing they say is, I forgive uh, that person and everything. And, uh, and I look at that as a great witness to the grace of God. Uh, but even then, some people feel, well, uh, no, you don't need to forgive so easy. So I want us to listen to a quick uh, account of Stephen in the Bible. In Acts chapter 7, Stephen was a man of faith. He was full of wisdom, full of the Holy Spirit. And uh, he was uh, passionate about preaching the gospel of the kingdom. And verse 58 says this in Acts 7, And they cast him out of the city and stoned him. Now that they are the people who's resisting the truth. Uh, they're resisting the Holy Spirit. And Stephen told them that they, they, they all, their forefathers resisted the Holy Spirit. And these Jews were resisting the Holy Spirit. And so they got upset. They cast him. They, they, they stoned him and, and, and ran him out of the city. city. And the Bible says, the witnesses laid down their clothes at the feet of a young man named Saul. And they stoned Stephen as he was calling on God and saying, Lord, uh, Jesus, receive my spirit. Then he knelt down and cried out with a loud voice. Listen to what he said. Lord, do not charge them with this sin. And when he had said this, he fell asleep. Notice what he said. Do not charge them. What he's saying, Lord, forgive them. How was Stephen able to forgive these people in the midst of the pain, in the midst of the assault, in the midst of all the negative things they were doing to him? Well, I believe the first thing is, I believe Stephen saw forgiveness as a command or directive of the Lord. In other words, he was forgiving them because he wanted to obey God. Whenever we forgive someone, we have to do it knowing that we are obeying God. Colossians 3.13b says, even as Christ forgave you, you also must do. So whenever we decide to forgive someone or forgive a, a particular group of people or whatever the case may be, we're not denying those negative emotions, but what we're saying, I'm going to obey God. I'm going to make sure my relationship with God stay intact. So it's, a, it's an act of obedience. Another thing is this. Forgiving others is not an acknowledgement of their innocence, but a release of one's own judgment of justice. You know, Stephen was not saying these people were right. Matter of fact, he told them they were wrong. He told them that they were resisting the Holy Spirit. So when we forgive people, when we forgive others, we are not saying they're innocent. And every emotion that want them to feel our pain, every emotion that want them to suffer and to pay, you know, to, 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 to be paid back, all of that goes away over time because we're willing to release them from our judgment. 
Now, there are times when people do certain things uh, that there is a judge in the earth. Romans 13 talks about the reason we have, uh, you know, earthly authorities is to be able to deal with justice and things of that nature. And they may have to go through that process. But even if they have to go through that process, uh, we still have to be willing to forgive because we want to honor God in our relationship with him. I want to encourage you today. I'm not denying your pain. I'm not making light of it. It's real. Uh, whatever has been done or uh, uh, was done to you is real. And, and But God don't want you to let that thing destroy you. He don't want you to live your life still nursing that and holding on to that wound. God wants to heal you. Jesus came to bind up the brokenhearted. God bless you. Have a great day.